Good morning. <laughs> it has been a morning. Welcome to Scottsdale Christian Church, kind of. We've been trying to go live feed this morning, and we are having all kinds of issues, so I am redoing things, the format a little bit. I'm going to record this message for you, uh, not live feed, but record it and then post it on Facebook in a few minutes. Uh, this has been a year. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, this is not our church building. Um, this is I'm coming to you live from my dining room. Uh, and I'm Tom Malone, by the way, the pastor of Scottsdale Christian Church. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, uh, we're not having in-person -pers service today. We will be back to having in-person service next week. We'll be having both services, the first one at 8.30 and the second one at 10.15 a.m. It's been crazy uh, out in the world. We are dealing with this crazy pandemic. We've had several people that were uh, had been... Uh, quarantine because they had been around someone we had three or four cases now luckily none of those cases were directly tied to the church so we are all pretty safe there as far as it uh, spreading through the church uh, but we didn't want that to happen so that's why we went to these uh, for these last two Sundays to do just online now Satan has been trying to keep us from having that today so uh, there is a way to work around it and that's what I'm trying to do now is just get uh, Get the message out there that God put on my heart for us this morning. I hope that you're all being uh, responsible um, and taking care of yourself. I hope that you're wearing your mask. I hope you're social distancing. I hope you're staying at home if you're sick. Uh, we should be able to start back to in-person services next Sunday. If you're looking for a smaller crowd, uh, that would be our first service. There's more, uh, seems like the second service is the one that most people come to. So if you're looking for a little bit more social distancing, think about joining us at our first service. Also, our Wednesday night uh, midweek prayer time will be starting back this week. That starts at 6 p.m. We're going to be praying for all the craziness that's in our world, for those that are dealing with this pandemic and whatever else that people might need some prayer for. So if you're I would like to join us. We would love to have you join us for that midweek prayer time. You don't have to pray out loud. Uh, Phil does a great job of leading us through that. Um, and we'll be looking forward to starting that back up this week. Also, check with your small group leaders to see when your Bible studies will start back. Each of those are a little different. So just check with your group leader to find out when that all starts back up. Now, with all that being said, I hope that you are all staying safe wearing your mask, washing your hands, and taking all the precautions that you need to to stay healthy and not spread something if you happen to get it. This is not something to mess around with. I um, also hope that y'all had a good Christmas um, and that you're having a great start to this new year, even though that we're having a little difficulty this morning with our, our live feed. So this morning, live from my dining room, I want us to, or not live, recorded from my dining room, I want us to spend some time together. I need you to grab a couple of things before we get started. First, I want you to grab some paper and a pen. And secondly, um, grab some juice and some bread for communion. Any juice, even water will work. Any bread, uh, even a cracker will work. Uh, God knows what our intentions are and he will understand if it's not our normal church juice and wafer. While everyone is getting, the, that, getting those things together, I'm getting settled in. Let me go over a couple of announce announcements with you today. We are moving our church work day that we had planned on having this coming Saturday to January 23rd. That work day was to, base, the main reason for the work day is to install our baseboards. We had a, uh, we raised the money a couple of months ago to uh, purchase the baseboards for our new building. Now we need to install them. The big deal is I need some people that can get down on their knees to help us install those. So I need you young guys that, or even your old guys that can get down on your knees and help us get those installed. So we need several people to help doing that. We're going to have to move some furniture out. But it's not just a work day to put the baseboards down. It's something that we can all be doing. Uh, we're going to be dusting. we got papers to be shredded. We need to wash some windows. Lots of things. So everybody, there's a job for everybody. But we especially need to get those baseboards down. Uh, so if you're available to do that on the 23rd, we would really appreciate that. Also, on January 10th, uh, we will be following our second service. We'll be having a celebration of life for one of our church members, Laura Felver, who passed away last month. 
Um, so if you know Laura, I plan on being there. If you know people outside of the church that knew Laura, let them know that we will be having a celebration of life next Sunday at 12 noon following our second service. Also on the 18th, mark your calendars, 6 o'clock. We're going to be having a planning session for 2021. We want to plan out the events and ideas for 2021. Everyone is invited to attend and help us plan out this new year. I want everyone to be included in the planning part, and so you'll be excited to be involved in the doing part. I want you to come with ideas. I want you to come with willingness to help put those ideas in motion. We need things that work in today's environment because things are a little different than they were two years ago. So we need to figure out ways, and there is ways that we can do that. Um, we need to be looking at outreach. We need to be looking at church growth. We need to be looking at growing our children's ministry. And anything else that uh, God puts on your heart that we need to be doing as a church and how we can do that throughout the year. And even some fun stuff. Uh, we want to be doing some fun stuff too. We've, uh, we've got our Christmas party coming up in March. Uh, so we'll be doing some fun things also. So it's a great time to be thinking about that and the normal events that we normally have throughout the year. Uh, looking at ways that we can have those this year and maybe just make some adjustments to the way we do them. And on January 24th, on that Sunday, I'll be giving my State of the Church message. We'll be looking back at the past year, and then we'll be looking forward to the coming year. So please um, think about attending all these upcoming events um, and mark your calendars. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is offering. It's a little hard to, for me to pass the plate around my living room this morning or my dining room. Uh, I guess I could. I have the office plate. Um, so I need you to all drop it in. Uh, I know that's a little bit. <laughs> don't make light of that. But uh, you've been so great to continue to support the church even when you've not been able to be there in person. So there's lots of ways that you can do that. You can go to our website, www.scottsdellecc.com. And you can click on the gift tab and it'll walk you through uh, giving through our secure site there. Uh, you can set it up through your bank. They'll do it like a bill pay. You can do a one-time thing or you can set it up as a regular reoccurring. You can also uh, go through Zelle. If you have any questions on how to do either of these, just call the office and talk to Tom or Marlene and we'll give you the instructions. You can also mail it in. We have a lot of people doing that right now. Our address is Scottsdale Christian Church. 2334 North Scottsdale Road, Suite B, as in boy, 106 Scottsdale, Arizona, 85257. Um, call the office and make arrangements for us to pick it up. That's another way you can do it. Uh, I've been doing that quite a bit over the last year. I will continue to do so. Or you can drop it off uh, at, the, at the church uh, throughout the week, too. You can call our number. Is, uh, church number is 480 946 4583. Again, I want to thank you for continuing to uh, figure out a way to get your offerings to us so we can continue to keep things going. Um, okay, I think everybody should be back and ready to start now. So uh, I just want to start off with some prayer. So uh, if you'll just join me in prayer for, for a couple of minutes, I would appreciate it. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to come to you this morning as a church family. Even though we were having some difficulties this morning, we thank you for uh, being bigger than our difficulties and finding a way. Uh, we're blessed to have technology during this time so that we can, uh, even when it doesn't work 100%, we still can make it work. Uh, we ask that you just to put a wall around us to protect us from Satan's attempts to stop us being able to meet together in this way. Continue to keep us strong, keep us focused, keep us faithful. Father God, we ask that you uh, just be with us to this coming year. We thank you for all the things you did for us in the past year, and we look forward to seeing the things you're going to do for us in this new year. Um, let us be mindful of looking for you in all things as we continue to go through this next coming year. Uh, be with us in, as our planning sessions go of what we're going to do. Let us make sure that we're following your will for our church and for our, ourselves as individuals. Uh, Father God, again, just continue to put your healing hand on our world as we continue to fight this pandemic and all the, the twists and turns that come along with that and all the things that affects. Uh, just continue to let us keep our eyes focused on you again. 
focused on you. For those that are dealing with it, uh, just let them feel your presence, let them feel your healing hand, and let them um, come out on the other side healthier and stronger and more faith in you than they did before. For all those that are, are, are afraid or going through quarantines and all these other things that we've had to deal with and these new way of life, let us just remember to, again, focus on you. Continue to remember that you're in control. Father God, we ask that you um, guide us, direct us through all of this. Uh, also, uh, be with us as we all make this decision about the vaccine. Uh, we know that you use modern medicine as modern-day miracles. And if that's what this is, put it on our hearts and our minds to, to be willing to, to accept your miracles. And if for whatever reason it's not what's right for us, let us have peace in that and let people on both sides of this, de decision, this debate honor and respect each other through their decision-making process. But let each one of us come to you when we're making that decision, not listening to the world, but listening to you on how we should react to not only this pandemic, but to the, to the future. Father God, I ask that you be with us during this time. Bless us as a church family. Let us feel, even though this is not ordinary, let us feel each other's presence. Let us link together through those modern technology and let us know that we're there for each other and let us continue to find ways to reach out to each other and to support each other until we can come back to being 100% back together again. We love you. We thank you for your son. We thank you for what he did for us on the cross. And we ask that you just be with us this morning and guide us through this service. It's in your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Well, <laughs> it's 2021. We just fin finished the longest year in history. Uh, I believe it had 865 days. I know at least it felt like it sometimes. Uh, when we started this year off last year, I don't think any of us um, guessed what the year would entail. We, um, we have faced things that most of us never experienced before or thought we would ever experience. I was joking with a pastor friend the other day about uh, my pastor handbook didn't cover some of the things that we've had to deal with this year. Or if, at least if it did, somebody had come along before me and ripped out the pages on some of these things. Things like this morning, um, how to do an online service when you can't keep a connection, uh, how Satan tries to shut us down, uh, or how to come up with a face mask policy. Who last January would have thought we would have had to have a face mask policy? Or having uh, sanitizing stations at church and all these other things that we've had to, to think about and do this year. How to deal with deciding whether to have Easter service or not. That one was hard. And then even Christmas Eve service. How different that was for us. As you can tell, they, it affects us. It affects me personally. But here we are. We made it through it. God is still God and God is still in control. And he's showed up for us in our lives so many ways over this past year. I just hope that we realize just how much he is involved in our lives. So I want us to start this year off right. I want us to think about and focus on that God is God and God is in control. It's a new year, which means it's a new start and it's a new season for us. Not only as us as individuals, but for us as a church also. 2020 is behind us. The rush of Christmas or non-rush of Christmas or the disappointment of Christmas or whatever it was is over. And it's time for, uh, and it's the time of the year that we set the tone for what will happen for us over the next 12 months. So let's not waste this opportunity to look at the fresh start of the new year and make some plans for ourselves and for our church. There are four ways that we can make the most of 2020 or 2021. It takes me a while to get used to those new year numbers. I'm calling them the four R's. First, we have to remember. Then we have to refocus. Next comes the restart. And then finally, the revelation. So we're gonna start off by talking about the remember part first. Now, just because this is a new year stretched out in front of us 
doesn't mean that we made a clean break from the past year. In fact, some of the craziness from the past year is coming right into the new year with us. And that's not unusual. But it is the perfect time for us to take stock of all that God did in our lives and in our church over the past year. Last week, I asked you to reflect on just that, to make a list of things that God had done in your life over the past year. And I gave you a list of things that God had done in our church over the past year. I hope you took some time to do that just that. If you haven't, you still can. Um, it really helps to put things in perspective. It's when we go through and we look for those God moments. 2020 vision is a lot easier to do than when we're going through the, the, and the del dealing with the minute of it happening. If you missed last week's sermon, you can go back and you can watch it on Facebook. Just go to our video section. I hear that it was a really good sermon. Just saying. Uh, now, I think it was important, an important message last week that we do remember what God has done for us in this past year because he has done some amazing things. I've heard the stories. I've experienced the stories. I've seen it in our church. I also want to challenge you to keep adding to that list throughout this year. Don't let this be a one exercise and done type of thing. Keep that list handy. Maybe you tuck it in your Bible or you get a notebook or a journal and you start tracking this stuff. And every time God does something good for you, I want you to reach out and I want you to take that and, and write down those things in your book. Or when you get through something and you look back, well, God was there. Write that stuff down. Because when you go through a rough patch, I want you to pull out that book or that list and look at it and remember what God has done for you and realize that he is still doing things in your life. It'll help you get through those rough patches. Now, while it might be unhealthy to spend too much time back there dwelling on the past, because we can't live there anymore. The past is, is past. But we can learn from it and we can still experience things from it. We all know that we're going to do it. We're all going to do the how. I remember wins. Do you know what? We're human. It's part of what we do. But we just got to remember that to do it in a healthy way. And once again, the Bible covers this very topic. The Bible provides plenty of examples when God's people took time to remember all the different ways that he had been faithful to them in their history. Psalms 105 tells, tells us, uh, remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the, and the judgments he pronounced. Psalms 105, verse 5. Several times in the book of Psalms, David and the other writers do just that. They recount Israel's history and the spectacular things that God had done. They don't live there, they don't dwell there, but they remember those things so that it will build them up in their present and in their future. This kind of spiritual reminiscing isn't just for the sake of nostalgia. It actually plays a huge part in our current, in our future intimacy with God. When we see and we remember in the present what God had did in the past, how God, God has... Uh, carried us through some really rough times or did some really amazing things. It draws us into worship with God. It praising his name in the right and proper response to his activities in our lives. This is what true biblical times look like for David, the Israelites. And it's just as true for us today. We can look back over this past year and we can see those moments when God was carrying us, when we needed to be carried. At the time, we may not have felt like that. It was a good time. Or felt like he was even there, maybe. But as we look back, we can see, and that's the time for us, that when we notice that and we look for those moments, we can't help but worship God. We can't help but praise his name for the things that he's done. So as we continue into the future, remembering God's work in this world, in our lives, both the unexpected, the expected, the seen, the unseen, all these things gives us faith for what we, what he will do next for us. Our trust in God grows when we take the time to remember he has always been faithful. He will always be faithful. 
God is still God and God is still in control. And we need to remember that by looking back and seeing those times in our life. So it's okay to remember, but it's not okay to, to stay in the past. So the next time, the next thing we need to do is to refocus. The next R is refocus. As we begin this new year, we often take stock of our lives. That's what we do. We make New Year's resolutions. We ask that we uh, assess our past decisions and consider the path that we're now on, what's coming up for us. So January 1st, the new year is a good time for us to refocus on what matters most to us. What do we want to make changes in? What do we need to do differently this year to accomplish where we need to be or where we want to be or where God wants us to be? That's why I, would, why I had you make that list last week. I want you to take your focus off of what is wrong in the world and remind you of what is good in your lives, even if things are rough sometimes. We may make all kinds of resolutions at the beginning of the new year. Some are health-related, job-related, family-related. But so often, the spiritual side of our lives gets left out of those resolutions. So I want us to take this opportunity for us to refocus our resolutions, to refocus and focus on that very thing this morning, refocus on the spiritual side of our lives. So for this year, I want you to set some resolutions that would, uh, that are all about Jesus. Have you ever done that before? Have you ever set Jesus resolutions for yourself in January? Just take it from the Apostle Paul. When he wrote about the essentials of faith, he focused on the death, the resurrection of our Savior. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 4 says, For what I received I passed on to you of, of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. As Christians, as churchgoers, we should be focused on Jesus. We should be focused on living like him, acting like him, serving like him, depending on him. So I want you to take that piece of paper I asked you to get at the beginning, of the, at the beginning and just like last week, I want you to make a list. This list is for the future. This list is for 2021. It's your spiritual resolution list. I want you to think about ways that you can be closer to God, be more like Jesus. You could have some basic stuff on your list, like read your Bible, uh, pray more, uh, things like that. But I want you to be specific. I want you to make a commitment to do the things you put on your list. I will read my Bible daily. Not enough. How much will you read it daily? Will you read one chapter, two chapters, or a whole book? What will you do daily? What is your goal? Make a plan. You might be, I'll set some time aside to spend with God. Well, don't just say that. When are you going to do it? What time? Set the time. 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Um, set a reminder on your phone to do it daily. And then do it. I want you to make a commitment to how much you give to God. If you've never tithed before... Maybe this is the year you should start or start with something, but set it, set it now and stick to it. Maybe it's that you start truly tithing for the first time. You've been a giver, but maybe it's time to start truly tithing and giving 10%. Or maybe you'll start off with $20 a week, but make a commitment to something and then follow through with it. Carry it out. Think about where you want to serve, uh, not only in the church, but in your community in your neighborhood, in your family, and do some very specific things that you want to accomplish this year. Think of people, who do you want to help? Who are those people that you want to help? Maybe it's the homeless, maybe it's your neighbor, maybe it's the kids in the, down the street, maybe it's older senior citizens, whatever it is, who do you want to help this year? And then I want you to pick places and people to do just that. If you need help with any of this, that's what I'm here for. But you have to reach out to me for me to help you. Or maybe you can do this in your Bible studies or your small group. Get together and come up with plans and help each other come up with these resolutions and then help each other carry them out. 
who do you want to introduce Jesus to this year? Think about that for a moment. Again, be specific. Think about somebody or somebody's with an S that you want to invite to church, that you want to introduce Jesus to, or you want to introduce to someone who can explain Jesus to them. But it's not all about you. <laughs> about me. No, I'm kidding. It's not all about you. I want you to also think about Scottsdale Christian Church. How are you going to be involved in our church? I want you to come up with ideas on how we can grow, how we can serve our community, and how we can be the hands and feet of our community in 2021. Then I want you to bring those ideas to us. We're having that planning meeting on January 18th, which is a great opportunity. I want your input on what to do this year in these areas. We can and should be making an impact for Jesus in our community, even during a pandemic. But it takes all of us. Yes, things are a little different right now, but we still can do things. They just might look a little different than they have in the past. It's time for us as individuals and as a church to refocus on what we're called to be doing, to make a difference. We have, we have to make specific commitments and follow through them. Every one of you watching me this morning, you make a difference and every one of you, God is calling to do something. You're never too old, too young, too busy to answer God's calling for you and for our church. Now we've covered the first two R's, the remembering and the refocusing. Now it's time for the restart, which is a great thing about a new year. It's a restart. So now is the time for us to start thinking about that. Now that we have our list, our commitments, it's time for us to embrace the spirit and remember that the most important resolution for us is our calling, is to make Jesus first in our lives. Our resolutions should reflect just that. Jesus died for us on the cross for a reason. He wants us to live a life that is worthy of him dying for. And our resolutions and our actions should express just that. For some of us, this may be something new. Maybe this is our first encounter with putting a focus on Jesus above our personal resolutions for the past. Maybe it's time for us to have a Zacharias, Zacharias moment, like Luke tells us about in Luke 19. It tells the story of Zacharias. It says he was bowled over by the love of God, that he eagerly repented of his sins, proclaiming, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Now, each of our Zacharias moments will look different. For Zacharias, his focus had been on money and taking as much of other people's money as he could get away with. What have you been focusing on in the past that is keeping you from carrying out your mission for being more Christ-like? Zacharias, it was money. What is yours? This is the perfect time for each of us to have our own Zacharias moment and put our actions into play. Or maybe you fall into the category of someone who just needs to recommit. In the past, you've been very involved in the church or your personal spiritual walk, and you've, you've maybe gotten lazy or maybe burned out or think, well, I'm a little older now and I can't do what I used to do or I'm too busy or it, there's a pandemic going on. So I can't do anything. Guys, these are all excuses. Maybe it's just time to restart giving Jesus first place again, to be intentional about it again. In the busy busyness of life, it can be easy to forget that we are commanded, commanded to love God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. That's Luke 10, 27. And it shows in our actions or do you need to recommit to that again? To love God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. And then it shows in our actions. This is a time to remember. This is a time to refocus. This is a time to restart. It is important for us as individuals and as a church to come 
back to what we are being called to do. For some encouragement, I want you to read the story of Joseph in 2 Kings. You will find his story in chapters 22 and 23 of 2 Kings. It provides this huge wealth of application while focusing on the importance of knowing and living out the scriptures. It's an amazing story of this young king. So I challenge you to read that this week. The final R is Revelation. When we hear that, we think end times. We think all these big things, but Revelation is just that. That aha moment of what's to come and the realization that it's real. With the new year seems to bring with it this sense of hope for the future. Our real hope lies in a new year. Not in a new year, but in a new age. That day is coming. And when there is we don't know. But we do know that that day, that revelation is coming. And Revelation 21 4 says, When it does, there is no more death, no more mourning or crying or pain. When heaven and earth will come together and God will come to live with his people again. And it's all because of what Jesus did for us on the cross that will get us to be a part of that. So refocus that we talked about earlier. Refocus ourselves on Jesus. This is what this life should be leading us to. Not the hearing the now. This life is fleeting. It's only a small portion of eternity. That is the revelation we need to take hold of now. In these days. And do what it takes to get to that point. And to take as many people with us as we possibly can. We need to make this the year where we take the opportunity to point ourselves and others to Jesus' second coming. We see the signs and wonders of end times beginning to play out. But are we ready? Are you ready? Are you getting others ready? Jesus teaches us of the final days in Matthews chapter 24 and 25. I challenge you to read that this week. In Mark chapter 13, he does the same. Also in Luke chapter 21. Maybe it's time we read up on what it is, what is to come, so it lights a fire in our hearts and guides our steps over this next year. Or maybe we need to read First and Second Thessalonians, which deals with the importance of being prepared for the Lord's return. That is the most important job we have as a church, as individuals. We as individuals and as a church need to embrace this revelation that the end is coming and we want to step into heaven and hear the words, welcome, good and faithful servant. That should be our goal every day, every year, every week, is that when the time comes, when the end comes and we step into heaven, we hear the words, welcome home, good and faithful servant. But are we living a life that will get us to that point? Does our resolutions show that? Do our plans show that that's what we're working for? The new year is all about new beginnings. So I hope you take some time to remember what God has done. That you take some time to refocus on what God is calling you to do. What God expects you to do. Then you get a restart on your spiritual lives and the spiritual life of our church and that we refocus on the final revelation that we are all heading towards. So what are you hoping to see the Lord do in your life this year, in our church this year? I hope you make your list, commit to your list, and live out your best Jesus life this year. So I want us to start this year off by coming together as a church, God's church, the one that Jesus built, and joining communion this morning as a sign of our commitment for the coming year. So I want you to take out your juice and your bread. I brought one from church. But whatever you've got, it works perfectly fine. God knows what we're doing this morning. He'll honor our, our dedication to it. Communion is a time for us. 
Communion is a time for us to come together to remember. We do this as commanded by Jesus himself. On the last night with the disciples, they gather together at the table. We not, might not be able to be at the same physical table this morning, but we are gathered together as a church family at the spiritual table together this morning. And just as Jesus commanded us to do, we will remember him. We will remember his teachings, his death on the cross for us, his resurrection, and the same fashion that he laid out for us on that last meal that he had with the disciples. And make a commitment to being his disciple this morning and to carrying out the great commission that he placed before us. To love like Jesus, to serve like Jesus, to share God's word like Jesus. So I want you to take the bread, which represents Jesus' body, that was broken for us, for our sins, and I want you to remember him this morning. Now take the cup that represents Jesus' blood, the blood of the new covenant, poured out for our sins and that washes us clean of that sin. We do this to remember of Jesus. We do this because he asks us to remember him in this way. And our future with him, in him, all starts with remembering him. Then it takes us to refocus on him. And then we need to restart in him. And then we need to remember the revelation and that moment when we get to stand before him and him welcome us home and say, welcome, good and faithful servant. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity for a new start, for a new day. We thank you for all the things that you've done for us in the past. And we hope that in remembering those things that we truly come before you with true worship and true praise. And I hope that we realize that if you were with us in our past that you'll be with us in our present and our future this morning let us remember all of those things so that it refocuses us on this new year this new opportunity that we are looking for ways to be more like jesus because of what he did for us on the cross to be more like your son that you sent to set that example for us let this be a time that we truly refocus our thought process and our actions. And let us get a restart. Whatever that means for each of the individuals hearing my voice this morning. For some of us, that restart is turning away from the world and turning towards you for the first time. For some, it's recommitting, re remaking that dedication to that right now and refocusing on our spiritual lives more than our physical lives as individuals and as a church. And that restart that we get this year, let us stand firm in our commitment to seeing it through, to carrying it out, to being your hands and feet to each other, into our community, into our world. And let us not take our eyes off of you don't take our eyes off the sky looking for Jesus to come back. I know we don't know when that date will come. It could be another 2,000 years. Or it could be next week. But let us remember that, that. Let us have that revelation that it could happen. And we need to be ready. And even if the second coming isn't in the next year. For some of us... Our meeting you may be in the next year. We don't know when our day is, but we need to be prepared. We don't know when our loved one's last day is, but we need to have them prepared. So as we start this new year, 
Let us remember how powerful you are, that you are still God and that you're still in control. Let us remember what Jesus did for us on the cross and what that means to us and how our lives should reflect that. Let us refocus on what's important. Let us refocus on our spiritual lives more than our physical lives. And let us get a restart. Let us get a fresh start. And let us remember that in the end, you are all that matters. And our eternity with you is the most important thing that we should have throughout the day. For anyone that's listening this morning that do not understand these things, let them have the courage to reach out to me or someone so that they too can understand the importance of who Jesus is and what it means to follow him and what it means not to follow him. In the end, we're going to be with you or separated from you. So if you don't know, if you're hearing my voice and you don't know the difference here, please reach out to someone. Father God, again, I thank you for this time that we get to spend together, even if it's unusual. I thank you for uh, us as a church family, for what you've done for us in the past and what you're going to do for us in the future. We love you and we thank you. And I pray that this is the year that we all step up and serve you without question, with full commitment. And Father God, for those that are struggling right now, for whatever the reason, let them feel your presence. Let them feel your hand on your shoulder, on their shoulder right now. Again, we thank you for sending your son to set the example for us. We thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us on the cross. We thank you for our chance to have eternity in heaven with you. We thank you for a place where there's no more pain, there's no more heartache, there's no more coronavirus. There's only peace and love in the presence of you. It's in your precious son's name I pray. Amen. Well, I hope that this is going to get you started off to a good year. Have a great week. Um, goodbye. See you on Wednesday night at our midweek prayer. And I'll see you next Sunday either in person or right here on our online services here on Facebook Live. I hope you all have a blessed week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. But above all, stay focused on Jesus. Stay focused on Jesus. And let God continue to be in control. And let him control you in your life. Have a great week.